What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday, where we take user-submitted videos. We try to make you guys lift better, safer, further from injury, more efficiently, and get more kilos or pounds, depending on what uh, what sort of religion you subscribe to, on the bar. Now, our first submission from today is going to be last week's last submission um, at this point in time that video hasn't gone up yet so I can't comment on how well you guys did in the comments but likely if it's anything like the rest of the uh, sort of viewer feedback that we've gotten on people's videos it's been fantastic and you guys did a great job of offering a whole bunch of constructive criticism so thank you very much for participating in a really cool community but we're gonna get right down to it here and I'm gonna take a look at it and I'm gonna let you know what I think of Ryan Deck's deadlifts here. So this is the side angle of the sumos against bands. So to be honest, I don't really see too, too much going wrong here. One thing that I do see a little bit of is it looks like Ryan's kind of starting the pull with his back. So when he initiates, I'm seeing the back come first as opposed to the quads pushing down first. So let's see if we can catch that real quick here on the slow-mo, now that I kind of have a rough idea of how to use this thing. So what we should be seeing is for this angle to maintain pretty much identical as we maintain. But what you'll see is, as he initiates the pull, the back angle changes pretty steeply as opposed to maintaining and us just seeing this angle changing. So that would be one thing that I would work on is a little bit more patience off the floor to maintain the back angle and do most of the pushing from here. This is the angle that we want to work with first and then the back angle shouldn't change until much closer to lockout. But it looks like we're starting to pull with the back, starting to pull back before we get up to around the knees. So that's something that I would work on there. Now taking a look at Ryan's video from the front, um, the biggest thing I'm noticing here is that your toe angle to me looks insane. Um, I don't know how you're able to do that uh, or how that's comfortable, but hey, I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. But what I do think might be happening as a result of that is I think that that's part of what's causing this looseness at your lockout. You'll see as you come through lockout, the knees unlock because as you extend the hips, because of the super extreme toe angle, we can't quite maintain a locked knee while pushing the hips through, so the knees come unlocked. Now that in a competition is gonna cost you a little bit, so I would try to bring that toe angle back in just ever so slightly so that we can keep the knees locked as the hips come through to finish the lockout. Thank you, Ryan. Now our next video submission comes from a guy named Daniel Bauer. Now you can see here, Daniel's doing some deadlifts. So if we watch his deadlifts here, he says he's trying to get a little bit more of a, a solid push to pull ratio uh, and trying to get away from feeling like he's stiff legging everything. Now, if you guys notice, there's a couple big things that I notice here going wrong. Number one is as Daniel pulls himself into position. Oh, there we go we'll see that we're not quite achieving, uh, first off, not quite achieving a neutral back angle. So here, we're looking at a little bit of a rounded back, especially in the, oops, in the lumbar spine here. So I would try to get a little bit more low back extension as you're initiating your lift. One way that I can generally cue lifters to get a bit more of that is pushing the knees out a tiny bit, as well as potentially widening the grip to allow you to kind of pull your chest through at the top and get these shoulder blades pulled into a bit of a better position, which leads us into the next thing that I see going wrong, is as you come off the bar, we can see the shoulders pull way out in front and end up pretty far in front of the bar, as so. Uh, super rudimentary drawing, so excuse that, but uh, that's another big thing that's gonna cause you to feel like you're stiff legging everything all the time is that as you come off the floor the bar pulls out in front of you and you lose some of that ability to maintain good position and use the quads off the floor so a little bit more patience because I think as you can see you're kind of jerking into the bar there 
Uh, so as you initiate the pull, you pull into position and then it's a real kind of snappy jerky movement. I would try to, number one, maintain a little bit, or sorry, achieve and maintain a little bit more of a neutral angle. And number two, be a little more patient with it off the floor and try not to jerk into it to get it started because that's pulling you out onto your toes and causing your back to round further. Second reps looking a little rough here. Um, so as we pull in, you can see again that bar pulls you forward. The hips start to rise up. Oops. Hips start to rise up. Shoulder starts to go forward. When we want to try to maintain this hip angle and just extend at the knee joint. So those are going to be the biggest things there. A little bit of patience, a little bit better back position. Hopefully that helps you, buddy. Our next video comes from Tim. Now Tim's doing a five rep max squat here. And to be honest, Tim, your squats look great, man. I don't see really any issues with them. I don't really think that there's anything that needs to be changed, uh, but your name was drawn. So we're gonna show your squats. We're gonna try to pick out anything that we can kind of think of going wrong at all. So the one maybe thing I can think of is we're getting a little bit of the hips shooting up out of the bottom but it's only to a point where you're still able to very much maintain that quad contraction. We're not seeing you get totally into a squat morning. So I don't think it's necessarily a big thing, but I do think as you continue to develop as a lifter, one thing that might be useful for you to do is some more high bar, high bar work, front squat work, and more quad focused work. Uh, because it looks like that's one thing that as you reach sort of a maximal exertion, we're looking at struggling just a little bit with. So what I would try to do is preemptively attack that, uh, treat it as a weakness, and hopefully it never becomes a limiting factor. So honestly, not too much to say. I love the home gym setup. Uh, there's a lot of Pepsi, like subversive advertising going on here, uh, but we'll let it slide today. Thank you for submitting your video and uh, let's try a little bit of quad work, a little bit of uh, some quad focused squatting and see if that gives you a boost. Now our next submission is some more deadlifts from Robert and uh, honestly the biggest thing here uh, is probably going to be pretty standard. It looks like we're running into a back angle issue. So first rep here honestly looks pretty good although you can see as we initiate the lift as we're coming up off the floor. We're getting a little bit of that bar pulling the shoulders out of position. If you watch right here, bars pulling shoulders in good position. And as we initiate the shoulders creep forward, start to lose the back. And then we end up pulling a little bit out in front of the bar. So a little bit more patience, a little bit more lats, a little bit more push off the floor. Keep a nice neutral back angle. And I think all those things are gonna kinda go hand in hand. <clears throat> it looks like you're able to achieve a good back angle as we can see on this first rep here. Because right before you pull, you get into a pretty damn good looking position right here. But, we end up sacrificing position and letting the bar pull you forward like that. So a couple of things there, I would definitely recommend that you try to fix. Now, if we look at Robert's other video, this was, I believe a one rep max test. So let's get into it here. I believe the pull starts right around here. So we can see that initial attempt was actually unsuccessful. So what we can see there is everything starts to come out of position and it comes out of position enough that the bar doesn't even leave the floor. The second one, we can see a couple things still going wrong. So what I would like you to try to do is if you guys can just watch the knees here as we initiate the pull, we'll see that the knees are kind of tracking all over the place. What I would like for you to try to do is maintain a little bit better external rotation in the hips. Not necessarily that your knees should be tracking outwards, but that there should be outward pressure from the hip 
onto the femur that will allow you to maintain good tightness through the hips uh, as well as, again, focusing on your bracing. If you haven't done any of the McGill stuff, uh, you've been following the channel for any period of time, you've probably heard me recommend it to about a million people, but Dr. Stuart McGill, the big three, use those as part of your warm-ups. It's gonna help you with your bracing, your spinal positioning, all those good things. So let's try to get those involved with the lift uh, in some way, shape, or form, especially, like you said in your own video, or in your own email, you have some bracing issues. I think those are gonna help. Our next submission is, believe it or not, some more deadlifts. This time they are performed by Jan. Now Jan mentions, and I think this is very much worth mentioning here, that these plates are smaller than normal. So he's having to reach further down to the bar, which for a guy that looks like he's quite tall is probably part of where a lot of these issues are starting from. So it looks like Jan's getting into a decent position to start with here. We can see we got a nice neutral back angle. Uh, the hips aren't too high, but shoulders are a little bit out in front of the bar. So we can look at trying to pull those lats down a little bit more into position. I think that might help a little bit to start off with. And as we initiate the lift, we end up with the shoulders way out in front of the bar. We end up with the hips rising quite a bit. And I think that's just a basic lack of patience again. So because of that, we're now losing the back angle here. We're starting to see some flexion there. And I think that it all kind of starts there. So first off, I would either put those plates on a, a couple of mats or something to make them closer to competition height because I think that's throwing you off. Number two, I would probably work with a little bit lighter weights for a while and get used to pulling it off of the floor, not letting your butt come up as you initiate the pull, but trying to make sure that it maintains and that this angle maintains instead of ending up at such a different angle. Let's see how this little angle tool thing works. Uh, well, that's super weird. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. So if we go back here, we can see that we've got, look at that, a nice 45 degree angle there. Now when we initiate the pull, we end up with 45 there. Now we have a much steeper angle. And you can see kind of the difference between those two. I mean, it's not as pronounced as I thought it was, uh, but this is kind of a tool, cool tool to be able to use. Uh, we can see that that angle uh, closes up quite a bit as we get into more of a stiff-legged position off the floor. Um, that may or may not just be me playing with new tools on this sort of software that you're using, um, but you can definitely see what I'm talking about there. What we'd like is for that 45 to maintain 45 until we get up to about past the knees, until we get to this portion of the lift here, and then we wanna see that hip angle change. As you can see right now, the hips are coming up first, the shoulders are coming out, and that's leading to almost all of the issues there. So a little bit of patience, a little bit better back tightness, and I think that's gonna go a long ways for you, Jen. Our next video is more deadlifts from Victor. I'm noticing a trend here. Not only do people often want deadlifts critiqued, but if we watch this video, we'll see that a lot of times people are making the same mistakes. Now a little bit less so with Victor here, but we're still seeing that bar start to move away from the shins as he initiates the lift. And I think maybe that's more a function of being too far forward on the feet. So if we see here, we've got kind of everything out in front uh, of the bar. And it looks to me like it's less an issue of patience and less an issue of positioning, more an issue of being too far forward on his feet. Now we can kind of almost see a little bit of a gap under his heels because the bar is pulling him forward so much. So Victor, the biggest thing is, yes, a little bit of patience, but as well, let's try to get you to maintain a little bit better pressure through your heels and through the whole foot. And as you lift the bar, try not to let it pull you forward as a whole. We 
can see in the shoulder here. Forward, out on the toes. Yes. And honestly, I think those are the biggest things there, is just maintain a little bit better pressure on your heels, be a little bit more patient, and I think that's gonna go a long ways for you. Our last submission today is gonna come from Ben Yu. Now, Ben, I believe, is doing some squats here. So this one is gonna be on you guys to take a look at. Let us know what you think. Leave constructive criticism in the comments below, and I will get to Ben's video and what I think of it in our next Form Check Friday. So we're just gonna let this play out. Again, if anybody is interested in a more detailed paid form check service where you don't have to win the lottery to get it uh, feel free to head over to calgarybarbell.com check out our coaching store and we do form checks there they're going to include training recommendations for assistance exercises supplemental exercises let's change the angle here uh, and they're going to include a personalized video for me so it's very much a sort of snapshot of the online coaching relationship that i have with my clients my online coaching right now for myself is actually full. We do have two other online clients, or sorry, online coaches working for Calgary Barbell that have availability. They are great coaches. Again, if you guys are interested in any of that, calgarybarbell.com, shoot me an email, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, that's it today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your video submissions. Send them to formcheckfriday at gmail.com, and we will see you guys in the next video.